hundred percent. It depends. That's exactly right. What do you What do you want to do? What do you want to get out of it? Right. Like, what are your goals? Uh, and a good example is this: you look at high level boxers. High level boxers are phenomenal rope skippers, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're great doing what you very specific to their sport. They have routines that they like to do, which in your world of, of freestyle and competitive jump rope, it's very rudimentary. You know, the skills they're doing, side swings, crosses, double unders, maybe a triple under here or there. Some right. Double crosses. Um, double cro- doubles with crosses. Yeah, exactly. Running in place, a lot of alternate step, a lot of footwork stuff. Yeah, it's very, very rudimentary uh, things in, from a, 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 from a, a high level freestyle. Yeah. Sk- skills percentage. But sport specific to them, they're very good at it. They, right. they they'll perf- they'll perform those and to a very high level. And it's functional for what they're trying to get out of the workout. Hugely functional in the sense that they do it typically with a longer rope, a longer rope than you or I would would typically uh, recommend for people. Mm-hmm. They use a longer rope, and I realized why after after spending time up at the Olympic Training Center, top, talking to the the Olympic coaches, you know. Um, you know, because obviously, you know, you know, we're the we're the official sponsor for USA mm-hmm. Boxing and USA Wrestling and all that. So, so we get to go and spend time with these high level coaches and again try and pick their brain. And hey, wh- how do you guys use the jump rope? What do you use it for? What are you trying to get out of it? You know, what are the goals? And and um and so with them, you realize like, well, boxers like a longer rope because a longer rope has more drag has more drag. Right. Has more air drag. Right. Um, right. It takes longer for just like you as a speed rope competitor, like a shorter rope for a faster rotation. They like a longer rope, which is a longer rotation, but they have to work harder to get that rope around them. The other reason is they also have to bring their hands up higher uh, uh, against their torso to keep the rope off the ground. Otherwise, right. it'll, you know, there's too, way too much drag. Uh, that rope will hit way out in front of them. So. In order for the rope to hit that sweet spot out in front of their feet, you know, keeping it within 12 or so inches, they have to raise their hands up, which is in more of a fighting stance when they're right. boxing or yep. fighting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it's so there's to give you an example. Yeah, that's a very sport specific use of a jump rope. Well, and this is uh, why, like, they, yeah, this is this is a great lead. And I know we're <laughs> we're both very hot on the subject of like any kind of information that's put out as this is the way to do something. It just doesn't work without the right context because there's just there's just too many ways you can use a jump rope and you can't say don't have a long rope don't bring your arms up don't do like and and for the people who understand the context of you or i typically they can make that first step of understanding that whatever information we give is within the realm of our understanding in our in our sports that we typically refer to but like by and large people who are putting information that's like this is the ultimate size for your rope. Like it doesn't work. Like even, even with the recommendations that we have through the RX method, those, those do work really well, but there's still a level of, of variance because it just, uh, yep. you know, they're very, you're right. They're very general. Well, so this is what it boils down to Nate, knowing your audience, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. Reading, reading and knowing your audience. So, if you're somebody out or there, also jump rope sorry, to, sorry to jump in, but just to, to reflect that the other way too, knowing your coach and knowing your coach's background, because we're now at a point where rather than being Dave, the obsessed jump rope guy who has a gymnastics background, understands how to really break down a system and then work and then take those foundations and then build a new system. You, you, people now have access to coaches and they can evaluate where they've come from to assess whether or not the information will serve them in the future. But yeah, continue. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, you hit it on the head, uh, everything you just said. But yeah, knowing your audience and knowing who you're talking to. Um, so if you know, like, hey, I only have, you know, I'm doing this podcast and I know that I only have, you know, speed rope competitors listening to me. Right. And, you, you know, and, and that's who you're talking to. And those are the ones you want to give the most amount of information and benefits to. Then then you're just going to talk speed rope. Everything's going to be light wire, mm-hmm. super short. You know, like all of those things. And um, and yeah, but yeah, I think you're right. You got to put it in context of, of what the people are, are after and what they want to achieve. And, you know, when you're looking for a coach. Yeah. I mean, I, you listen, you can learn a little bit of something from everybody. Yep. Everybody has something to offer yep. for sure. 